an early frost brought an early end to my garden for the year, but I can still use this space for food production. It'll just be with pigs. Earlier last week, I think it was around Labor Day, we had a frost, it was actually probably a freeze, uh, but at very least a frost that pretty much put an end to the garden. I harvested what I could out of there a few days ago. Check this out. So I hope to be making some sauces in upcoming videos, some salsa verde. But for now, I was thinking it would be an excellent use of this space to get the pigs in here. There are a lot of weeds in here, a lot of dead garden plants. That kale is still going, but it's pretty buggy now. Lots of little worms and all kinds of aphids and stuff growing on them. I was planning on finishing the pigs in here. Harvest is probably about six weeks away or less for these pigs. I was planning on leaving them in here until they were finished because I didn't want them out of pasture anymore. But this has turned into an absolute dust bowl here. Dan's partner has come to give me a hand with moving the pigs. Say hi, Dan's partner. Hi. And of course, Poe, the rat terrier. With this soil being so turned over and now sandy and dusty, and the garden area being so overgrown, I figured it'd be great to get the pigs in the garden area, let them turn it over, get rid of some of those weeds, and then we can overseed in the garden area with a cover crop for the fall and winter. Of course, we'll get snow in the winter and that'll end the cover crop, but you know what I mean. Normally you'd see mountains above the horizon off in the distance there, but from all the wildfires, there's so much smoke in the air, visibility is super poor. All right, so where you see Dan's partner over here, we're gonna take the pigs around here, go behind this tree in front of the chicken tractors there, and then over to the garden there. Of course, a lot of that's overgrown along the way, so I'm gonna get the mower and put in a path real quick. got the path mode, we're gonna set up electric fencing now to keep the pigs on the lane on the way to the garden. So we'll take a quick chicken intermission while we're setting up the fence and we'll be right back. Now I realize we haven't done a chicken intermission in quite some time, so we'll make this a special chicken intermission, a chicken catching intermission. Uh-oh, chickens are out. What are you ladies doing? Free ranging. Let's get you back in. The problem here is this. My staples came out a while back and I used a cable tie to cinch it back down. But the cable tie broke. Hi right, Priscilla. Yeah, I got the fishnet handle propped up against that to hold it closed until I can go get a, another cable tie. All right, so we have the fencing set up. Let me show you. We'll leave the pig corral and head this way. And then when we get to here, we have some makeshift obstacles here to keep the pigs on the correct path. And they'll go here into the garden. I pulled the tomato plants out since they're nightshades. I don't know if the pigs are gonna try and eat them 
or not or if they'll get sick from that but I thought better safe than sorry and now we need to get all the drip irrigation line out it should just be one line I think maybe there's two you'll see The drip irrigation line is out. I pulled a lot of tansy all along the greenhouse edge here. Tansy is this plant here with the yellow flower, super noxious weed. Uh, it does have some medicinal purposes. It is a natural parasticide, so if the sheep graze on it, it helps them with parasites. But it takes over pasture and it, it, it's super invasive. It reproduces rhizomatically as well as with seeds. So the roots just keep sprouting new ones. It's nearly impossible to pull out of the ground when it's this size uh, under normal circumstances. However, this garden is not under normal circumstances. In the spring, we had the pigs in here, which tilled everything up, and then we put the mulch down in here. So the soil is super soft, pliable, and I was able to rip the tansy right out. The reason I needed to remove that tansy along here is because I'm gonna put the electric fencing along this line here, and cut it over there to keep them out of the greenhouse so they don't tear it up, they will destroy it. They did break the door earlier in the spring and they'll definitely try and use this as a scratching post which will do some damage here. And the pigs are much bigger now than they were in the spring. All right, Paul, you ready to move the pigs? Yeah, you ready? How about you, Blue, are you ready? You ready to move the pigs? How about you, Willow, are you ready to move the pigs? I did not give the pigs their food this morning during morning chores, so they will be hopefully hungry and food motivated for luring them down the aisle there that we built them. Are you hungry? I gotta go get your food. We're not gonna put too much feed in there so this thing doesn't get too heavy and it'll be easier. Come get your food. I think, I think the challenge is gonna be now that we took the electric fencing down in their corral, they have that perimeter of fresh grass they haven't turned over. Like, dude man over there is going to town, so he may not be interested in... Well, she's interested in the food. Hopefully when she goes, he'll go. All right, they're both here. Let's open open the gate. Here we go. Come on, Piggy. Come on. Come on, Piggy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And they're off. Come on, Piggy. Come on. Okay, I'll just carry your food. Hey, come on. Come on. Piggy, Piggy. Just a little bit of a change of a plan with the fencing. Instead of having the fencing cut over that way, I just kept it on this way. Brought it around the front here. That way it keeps them off of that gate so I can get in and out with their feet or whatever I need to do in here without them rushing me at the gate and being able to get out. And it just continues on over to there. So it's just an L shape. What are you getting? What's under there? We got the water done. We got the shelter in. I don't know if you can tell, but the smoke has gotten so much worse. It is stinky out now. We are all set here. The garden has been turned over to the pigs, so the pigs will finish in there. Probably. That's kind of the plan for now. We could move them again. Who knows? So the pigs are finishing the garden. The garden is finishing the pigs. Yeah. 
We're gonna check back later on the pigs to see what kind of progress they make in the garden. In the meantime, it is time for Willow's bath. Uh-oh, Willow's getting a bath. Sadly, as you can see here, Willow is still having some issues with hot spots. Those reddish spots on her fur are from her licking, so she gets an itchy eczema type issue on her skin and then she starts licking and chewing at it and her saliva stains her fur that color. We've been bathing her regularly and using a medicated shampoo that's supposed to help her skin issues. She's been doing a lot better. There are fewer hot spots now it seems, but we're still having to stay diligent with all her treatments. Here we are with the pigs two days later. Let's check out what they have done. Piggy piggies. Look at that. Nice work. They're just not big kale fans. As you can see, there's kale on the ground still. They uprooted the kale, but didn't eat a lot of it. What's wrong with the kale, dude? Not your thing? Here we have buckwheat. I got about 15 pounds of it or so in this bag, which is more than enough to overseed in this area where the pigs were. I'm gonna have to rake this smooth and then cast the seed over this. Buckwheat is a really good cover crop. It's used in gardens a lot. Buckwheat is really good because it does well in cool and wet environments. Now that we're heading into fall, it's gonna start getting really cool here. And of course it's gonna get wet too, as it usually does. If I can get that buckwheat to germinate before it gets too cool, it'll survive in the cool fall and it should last until snowfall. I ran out of time for today, so I won't be getting to the overseeding. I'll have to take care of that tomorrow. Hey little buddy, what did you learn about buckwheat today? Uh, that it looks like chocolate chips. <laughs> yeah, looks like chocolate chips. What else did you learn about it? Uh, I didn't really learn anything about it. Did, that it doesn't taste like chocolate chips. Oh, yeah. How'd you learn that? My dad told me. Yeah, you didn't try it, did you? No. No. Okay, the sheep need water. Can you go get them some water? Yeah. All right. Thank you, little buddy. Okay. Tell us how many eggs today, little buddy. Four. Four? Yeah. Oh, you know what? There was one in there earlier that I got, so five today. Five out of six, not bad. It is still pretty smoky here in North Idaho and raking this section out here today is gonna get pretty dusty because this soil is so sandy. So between the smoke and the dust, I figured a mask might be the smart way to go today. With that raked over, I'm gonna start spreading this buckwheat seed down. With the seed distributed in this area, the next step ideally would be to put down hay or organic straw, something like that to cover it over. But I don't have any hay to spare. I have just enough to finish my sheep. Hopefully I have enough to finish my sheep. So there's some old hay on the ground here from when the sheep were in here. I'm just gonna spread some of that around, water in the seeds and call it good. With that all watered in, we'll have to just wait and hope for germination. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the plan is to hopefully get cover crop down on here once the pigs are out. But that'll probably be in harvest time in mid-October, and there's a good chance the temperatures will be too low for germination by that point. So we'll just have to play it by ear, see what happens with the weather. Hopefully next time we meet, the smoke will be gone, and we can ditch the mask. 
In the meantime, if you like the content, be sure to click the subscribe button and then the little bell next to it to enable notifications so you get notified next time I upload a video. And also be sure to follow along on Facebook and Instagram. Sometimes there's additional stories on there that are not available on YouTube. For those of you who like cooking videos, coming up soon we'll have the Salsa Verde video as well as hopefully some tomato sauce.